Hey everyone, today we have a wonderful opportunity to relax a little bit, step back, think about something nice and pleasant. And in my world, that's perfumery, which is why I'm bringing this little video out for you, appropriate, appropriate to the season. So as you already know from the title, today we're talking about uh, the transitional fragrances that I have picked for this year. Um, transitioning from winter to spring. Once spring hits, I go like full force spring uh, and it's usually like crazy florals during the transition. I normally do florals, but slightly with an edge. Um, I'll show you my selection of six. So right now I have six fragrances that I'm actively using. So let's get into it. The first one that I absolutely love is actually a body spray. And I am not a fan of body sprays at all. I, this is probably the only one, the only official body spray that I own. And I have a few fragrances in my um, fragrance wardrobe that kind of act sort of like <laughs> body sprays. This is though the only official body spray that is in my possession currently. And this is Rose Jam Body Spray from Lush. I have to say, I hate the packaging with a passion. I think it's super ugly. Some people really like it. Machino came out with a similar packaging for their fresh line. I think that's what it's called. This is absolutely lovely. If you like Lush and you like the Rose Jam scent, basically they bottled it, which is fantastic. Um, sometimes it becomes very disappointing if a scent that you love in body care does not translate well into fragrance. This one absolutely does. It is not long lasting. It is not um very large on sillage it is a fun pleasant refreshing sort of uh floral fruity or fl fruity floral depending on on what what uh, dominates on your particular skin rose jam indeed has a rose in it for sure there is a very strong rose presence it has lots of red berries it has tonka bean business lurking about and warming up the fragrance and making it uh, meld with skin quite nicely. This is really great. If you like a body care scent that is this, fantastic. Actually a rather wearable scent, probably uh, an instant like among most people. So a crowd favorite. If you are into pleasing people, this might work well for you. I already said that the performance on it is not great, but it is a body spray. So I'm not really expecting a fantastic wear out of it. I do enjoy it very much and I would recommend you checking it out. The next contender, the next pick is definitely something I constantly pull on either during fall or during uh, sort of a winter to spring transition. And this particular one is the, um, the Guerlain's answer to uh, a body spray, not luscious body sprays, but this is a very lightweight eau de toilette, which really wears kind of somewhere in between the eau de toilette and the body spray. This particular scent from the line though, does wear like a traditional eau de toilette, does have some good lasting power, does all of those things that a good concentrated eau de toilette should do. All right, so I didn't even tell you what I'm talking about here. This is Guerlain Aqua Allegoria Flora Nymphaea. It's a rather old scent. I think at this point it was released nine years ago. And this is a scent I have repurchased and I have actually a backup waiting to be open. Um, in the dark, dark, dark corner of my um, cl backup closet. So this is a magical little release. I really usually enjoy Aqua Allegorias because they are a rather simple approach to um, another toilet with few ingredients, very clear direction. They know what they're doing with it. The line has been very consistently represented with very clear direction and uh, Flora Nymphaea is definitely reflective of that. It is a gorgeous floral honeyed scent. It's really blooming white florals trying to attract those bees to make that honey. There is a lightness to it, but it is generally a rather dense fragrance that was somehow lifted up. And so it does not appear, once, once applied, it does not appear heavy at all. It is hopeful and uplifting, a smile in a bottle. Uh, that's why I love this fragrance so much because it's just such a mood booster. Uh, the honeyed florals are really making you think about uh, blooming meadows and all kinds of lovely countryside ideas. Nothing green in here, nothing watery, nothing traditionally spring, just the opulence and the richness of that honeyed propolis almost. 
of this nectar um, rather attracts me, I have to say, and I am completely happy to be using this guy. Um, I would be very sad to be without it. The next fragrance on our roster is a Prada. I don't own a lot from Prada right now. I used to have a few of their fragrances. This is the only one that is actively used by me right now. That is my fragrance wardrobe and is being pulled out all the time. This is on a Prada Enfusion Diri. If you're familiar with the traditional iris infusion, then you will know the premise of this particular fragrance. This, however, is Absolu. So this one is not uh, the original. The original Eau de Parfum is something I love and I would love to get my hands on rather soon. I probably will. Uh, but the original is a rather cool distancing kind of fragrance. It's a bit of aloof and it's certainly a no excuse down to business kind of uh, fragrance. This is a little bit more full bodied, a little bit more realized, rounded off, a little bit less cold and distant. Although I do like a cold and distant fragrance always. Um, because I think that's a very interesting genre um, that is underrepresented in perfumery. A cooling um, sort of set your mind on business and don't approach me with uh, your silliness and shenanigans kind of fragrance. That, that's not celebrated enough in perfumery. I do believe that those kinds of fragrances can be extremely attractive. The coolness and aloofness of it all is just delicious and uh, very characteristic of a lot of people. <laughs> so I feel like it should be more popular. However, this guy is a little bit more tame. It's a little more social, so to say, because it does have a rounded up, more substantial, warmer base. The iris is still, of course, the prima donna of this particular little mix. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Probably a little bit harder to find in retail than is the original. It's a great work scent. Uh, I will make a video, separate video, talking about good down to business work scents, and this is definitely one of them. But it is still rather approachable, and I would say much more approachable than the original. If that's something that interests you, do keep an eye out for that particular one. Again, I love the original as well. Next, we have one of the For Her. Uh, fragrances from the Narcisa Rodriguez lineup. The For Her line is something that I enjoy, really, really respect. Narcisa Rodriguez in general makes, in my opinion, some of the nicest fragrances in that particular price range. Um, extremely high quality and they do not compromise. On ingredients, the fragrances are usually very well rounded. They have a particular point of view. They always construct their scents around flowers and musk, and that's just who they are, and I love that. I love a fragrance house that is not compromising their identity. They know who they are, they present themselves in a way that they should, and it's very clear <laughs> what to expect from them, which is something I actually really like. I love consistency in a fragrance house. There's so, so many uh, perfume houses right now that lack consistency completely, and it infuriates me. I would much rather kind of know what I'm about to get, like with Narciso Rodriguez, and not be disappointed and be happy and look forward to it than sit there and sort of guess I wonder if the next one will be a flop. 50-50, eh, it's a toss-up. There are plenty of fragrance houses like that. So respect to Narciso Rodriguez for sticking to their guns, not wobbling around, and just creating what they do best, which is floral musks, which is what this guy is. So this is a play on the original For Her of the Parfum. There is this combination of patchouli and musk that is very reminiscent of the original. Musk is a little bit more uh, pure and clean in this one. And more importantly, two of my favorite flowers are completely dominating this particular scent. Uh, I have maybe four favorite flowers that I always pay attention to and if a scent is centered around them, I generally get very attracted to that particular scent. Two of them are in here. It's uh, roses and peonies. Roses and peonies are some of my favorite scent flowers. Um, here they really meld well together to create this explosion, the juicy, bonanza of florals which is rather comforting and fun and happy after a long winter plus uh, winter fragrances um, preceded by fall fragrances that had been dominating the seasons for now so this floral is just celebration of life it's a burst of energy the rose and peony are always a good combination and they definitely flow well together here. There's a lot of roundness and softness to the fragrance, not just because of florals, but they're well grounded in some tonka and vanilla. If I could akin this to some kind of a 
um, analogy with taste. I would say a sour gum with a jelly center. When you bite into that and you have that salivation and all of that sourness and sweetness floods your mouth, kind of this is the scent version of this. It's really fun. Um, very olfactorily pleasing combination. Another Narciso somehow ended up in here. This is one of the very new purchases I made. In here I have two new purchases. This is one of them. The next one is also a new, a new addition. So Narciso Eau de Toilette specifically. I actually have owned the Eau de Parfum since it came out, um, the, the Rouge, so the red cube with the red matte um, plastic cap. This one is the see-through cap in the white print here. So this, this is another toilet. I was really happy to receive it and I, I bought it with full knowledge that it was probably not going to be all that different from the Eau de Parfum. I was kind of right and kind of wrong. In fact, I'm planning a video right now comparing and contrasting the Eau de Parfum and the Eau de Toilette of the Narciso Rouge and talking about them to see that maybe I can help you guys choose one way or another. Um, I think the longevity, the wear time, all of the things that we are expecting from a well-constructed fragrance are here. This is an eau de toilette, but the wearability and the wear time and the concentration of the molecules, probably not all that different. Um, it still has the same amount sillage as the original Rouge Eau de Parfum. So if Rouge is a celebration of velvety, juicy, uh, absolutely luscious roses in a musk. This guy is an ode to the lily of the valley. Lily of the valley, in my opinion, is really just not used enough nowadays. It's not a very popular uh, floral to use, but it is just such a clear bell-like uh, piercing quality to the lily of the valley. Um, the purity of it all is just heart melting. So I was extremely happy to include this in my winter to um, spring lineup. So here we have a very clean musk. This is still Narciso musk, no doubt, but it is on the cleaner side. Uh, the musk and some of the Tonka sweetness is really rounding off the what could be sharp edges here because uh, Lily of the Valley usually runs the risk of being screechy if not moderated. Here it is well balanced and I think definitely avoids being screechy, but the pureness, the lightness and the effervescent quality of Lily of the Valley. The scent of spring, <laughs> Lily of the Valley is always a very, very spring floral. Um, it's here. So this to me really signifies that transition. I think it's a beautiful spring fragrance as well. Uh, probably in the summer, I would imagine that the base notes, including uh, sweet, some of the sweeter stuff that is in there is going to be a little bit more aggressive and come out a little bit more, which would tamper with the freshness of it all. Uh, so I think spring is actually a perfect time, at least so far in my experience, to be wearing this guy. I will report back how it wears in the summer. Obviously, I just purchased it. It's the newest release from their fragrance house, so I have no idea what it wears like in any other time apart from uh, winter and, I guess, spring now. So this beauty is a very, very nice purchase. Uh, was one of the purchases that I didn't get a chance to smell before I bought, but I am comfortable enough with this perfume house and it's consistent enough and I know what to expect. I usually love everything they make, almost, almost. The Poudre, the Narciso Poudre, did not like that uh, sort of millennial pink colored um, cube, not my thing. That was a little too sweet. It, it was a little nauseating. Uh, none of the others really go that way, although they do have a fair amount of sweetness there to balance all of the um, very bright notes. So Narciso is excellent in the eau de toilette format and I expect a video comparing and contrasting the EDT and EDP. My last wonderful, wonderful noob in my um, fragrance wardrobe is something that you've already heard about on my channel. I've um, used up multiple minis of it over the years. I've kept my eye on it for a long time and finally it was time when I just definitely wanted to get my hands on it. So we're talking about uh, Frédéric Mal, Edition de Parfum Frédéric Mal, uh, Musque en Vageur. And my understanding is that the nose was Maurice Roussel. This, my friends, is my favorite, my skin but better sort of fragrance. Uh, I also have another one that was specifically constructed from me by a perfumer in Salem. 
uh, Massachusetts where I was at a friend's wedding this summer I booked a perfumer I, I, I booked a perfumer consultation and she created a fragrance based on how it would develop on my skin and it's also one of my perfect skin scent kind of fragrances I think I've already told you guys about it but but I will talk a little bit in more detail about it. However, this is a beautiful, beautiful my skin but sexier sort of scent. It is a comfort scent. It's definitely not a fragrance that um, I would say creates such a huge impact or is so loud and proud and has this huge point of view. No, I think this is a quiet, slow burner. I think it's, this one is very easy to fall in love with. And very difficult to forget because it does create this all enveloping beautiful aura of warmth warm beautiful smooth velvety skin so uh, it's so there's a little bit of magic packaged in here I got a killer deal on it I was extremely happy because um, let me here's the social chain that happened at the time uh, a couple of months ago when restrictions weren't in place and um, I went to Toronto to get some update training on Botox and fillers. Um, so when I was there, I had my mind set on getting this guy and a sister of my husband's brother's girlfriend, oh my God, somehow I, I ended up reaping the benefits of knowing that particular person. So she manages, I think, one of the fragrance boutiques. Maybe she's one of the people in Holt Renfrew uh, there. And so that's where I found this. It's hard to track down in person. It's much easier to find online, but I was kind of uh, determined to get me some. And so, um, and so my husband's brother's girlfriend got this for me and then I paid her back, obviously. Um, point of the story being I got like 30% off on it. This is magical and huge luck because these, this little guy is not cheap at all. Uh, the price tag was always what was keeping me from buying it, but you know, fate played into my hand and here we are. So Mousse Cauvage, what is in it? <laughs> it is such a weird, it is such a unique combination, a combination that you don't come across very often that creates this particular cozy, warm skin, my skin but better sort of effect which is very sexy in my opinion too. So this would be perfect for very close encounters, I would say. Um, it doesn't have a huge throw, but it does have that come hither sort of quality. But for you guys out there who are looking for that, do try this. Here we have a very beautiful, not powdery vanilla. And this vanilla is supported by a variety of spices. It's like a vanillic spicy fragrance. And in the end, I'm not really smelling a ton of spices. I'm just smelling magic, basically. So they're cloves, carnation, which is usually, this combination is usually killer and disgusting on my skin. And even each of those ingredients on its own is very tricky to incorporate into a fragrance without making it sweaty. Both of those ingredients, in fact, do contribute to the sweatiness of the fragrance. Carnations are hard florals to pull off. Um, in, in a fragrance and cloves although super interesting flavor in terms of what they provide to a fragrance it is indeed kind of difficult to incorporate them gracefully both of those are a significant portion of what makes this special we have an ambery coziness that is also contributing and a finishing touch that I felt was really really well represented is cinnamon so Yes, it sounds like a pantry, <laughs> basically. It definitely sounds like a pantry, but it is such a wonderful mix and it's absolutely not smelling like a spice fragrance at all. It smells like human emotions feel, I guess. Um, I have a hard time describing it because it is just so far away in how you, um, how you inhale. After you inhale, it is just so far away from what you see in the pyramid, which is um, this, which is a signature of the master perfumer, making something magical out of unexpected and not necessarily widely used notes. So wonderful, Mousse Cravageur is fantastic. It's my My Skin by Better scent, officially. Uh, and I would recommend trying it before buying it because perhaps that's not what you're looking for. Maybe you don't like your skin but better or maybe it doesn't jive with your particular skin. 
Also, it is uh, the most expensive one out of all of them, and I would definitely not recommend buying blindly something that is uh, <laughs> carrying this kind of a price tag. So that's it for today. I hope it was interesting for you to check out the fragrances that I've picked for my transitional winter to spring seasonal rotation. It's really, really fun for me to do these videos and it's really, really fun for me to select and revisit particular fragrances that I think fit the mood and fit the season. Uh, eventually I'll do a whole fragrance collection, but right now I think it's just a little bit overwhelming. So I will continue with regular content and uh, then see what I can do about that fragrance wardrobe video. So let me know down below in the comment section what you are using in, during this demi-season transitional time from uh, winter to spring. Do you have favorites? Do you have specific scents that really call out your name and appeal to you at this time of the year? And if so, what are they? And also be interesting to note why. Why are you picking this specific um, scent as your transitional scent? That's it for today, guys. Stay safe, stay healthy, stay positive. If you're self-isolating, use the time to create joy in your life as much as possible, and let's stay connected online. That's it for today. See you guys later. Have a wonderful day. Bye.